Well hello, my name is Andy Tidy and welcome to another edition of Canal Hunter. So far in this series we've travelled down from Birmingham almost to West Bromwich. We've been following the line of Brindley's old 1769 canal and right now where I'm standing the old Brindley line and the Telford line have combined and are running in the same channel. Off to my right there is the direct line through to Tipton that's the island line that was the one built by Telford when he was doing the straightenings. But where this episode takes us is to veer off the Telford line and we're heading into the coal fields and the ironworks which the old Brindley Canal was built to serve. Where I'm standing right now is poetically called Pudding Green Junction. Don't ask me why it's called Pudding Green Junction but it's not a name that you forget. It leads off into the Wensbury Old Canal. Behind me you can see the bridge and from here on you're going to see the canal deteriorate and deteriorate and you kind of get to see the whole spectrum of canal deterioration. Right through here from here which is on the main line, deep, wide, getting shallower and shallower and then it'll get reedier and reedier until eventually the canal just peters out altogether. And that's where the real canal hunt begins. Up till now you may have thought, well Andy, you're just scratching around for little fragments here and fragments there. You've even been looking for a canal that sits up in the air. Well, from here on, you start to clock off them in miles. There's probably two miles of lost canals back there, and that's what we're going to explore in the next two episodes. As we proceed up this section of canal, which a lot of people will refer to as the start of the Warsaw Canal, you'll be passing the old Eisen arm, which had a lock in it, that's a private arm, and then there was the Union arm that went off on the other side and crossed across where the main line is now. There's no trace of either of those apart from the, the entrances. I'll take a photo of those as we go past. But more and more, this journey will now start to be an explanation of what used to surround us. Where we're really heading into in the centre is a place called Swan, Swan Village. It sounds bucolic, doesn't it? Swans, ponds, absolutely lovely. In fact, the whole hilltop area used to be known as a beautiful area of gardens and orchards. Well, the Industrial Revolution put paid to that. Um, today, well, it's not gardens and orchards. Uh, it's not the worst of the Industrial Revolution either. A bit nondescript. However, it is an excellent place to go and have a look at lost canals. So, we'll head off up the old Wensbury Old Canal, see what we can see. We've moved maybe 400 yards down the Wensbury Old Canal and what we're seeing here is the, uh, the gradual encroachment of all the weeds so it's getting narrower and narrower but most particularly interesting you see these little buttresses that kink in from the towpath. These are the entrance to the old Izon branch. It's been blocked up, there would have been a bridge over here to allow the horses to carry on on the towpath and the Izon branch was a private little bit with a, a single lock in it as far as I can see from the old maps with some collieries at the top and uh, no doubt the collieries pumped the water into the canal which was enough to feed the limited amount it needed to use the lock from time to time. Going across on the other side although there's no real trace of it anymore uh, the exit of the Union branch and the Union branch has a little network of canals stretching out for maybe half a mile it's all lost on in industrial estates now but, um, that was the, uh, the Union Arm, and that crosses over where the, uh, the new main line is. Now I could be accused of getting very excited about absolutely nothing, but here under this uh, nicely restored but unprepossessing footbridge, uh, there used to be a basin, and the basin contained a boatyard. There's nothing to see of it now because the, uh, the industrial units up on top have all been built on reclaimed land, so the levels have all changed. The boatyard which occupied this spot is the likely birthplace for the front end of our butty. It's one of the few boatyards around and they were still making uh, iron and riveted butties back in 1900. We've now arrived at the top of the Riders Green locks. These are the eight locks which were built pretty soon after Brindley made the main canal and they were built to drop the canal down through to the coal fields at Broadwaters. The original Brindley Canal goes off to my left this way. It came known as the Balls Hill Branch because that's where its destination was. The sign optimistically says that it's one and a quarter miles to the terminus. Sadly that's no longer the case and you can't get a boat more than 100 or 200 yards up this arm. 
Interestingly, right on the corner stood the enormous Riders Green Tar Works. Still occupied as a factory today, and there are remnants like the big, uh, the big tar vat. It's still marked on the map. Uh, so industry continues, although the nature of it has changed over the years. Anyway, we're going to go and take a look at the Bulls Hill branch, and I'll show you the varying stages of decay as we go along. Well, this is really where uh, the bottom of the canal starts to touch the top. This is the uh, section maybe 400 yards up the Balls Hill branch and as you can see the canal is narrowing down and the weeds are closing in. Let me just climb up onto that bridge in front and I'll show you what awaits. This is the sorry state of what could uh, euphemistically be called the navigation channel of the Balls Hill branch. As you can see it's wall-to-wall -wall reeds all the way down. Every year a few brave boaters decide to come up here and see if the weeds really are as bad as people say they are. Believe me, once you get to this point, it really is bad. Don't be deceived by the seemingly open canal off to the west. It's shocking to realise that this level of reeding up has happened over the space of just 10 years. It's in 2008 that I last brought my boat through here. Even then, the channel was barely wide enough to take the boat. Uh, it slithered across the mud, it took ages to get through, and the, uh, the muck that it churned up from the bottom was absolutely unbelievable. Um, think of babies' nappies and multiply it by a factor of about four. It was foul. And then, as if by a miracle, the weedy section ends. Uh, the canal returns to its normal sort of state and here is technically the terminus of the current Bulls Hill branch. Clear open water, nice winding hull, bit of a mooring up ahead to the end of the canal and the site of the old bridge which was dropped in the 1980s. So this is really is the end of the road even if you can get through the weed blockage. Well, I say the end of the road, but if you cross over the Black Country New Road and uh, come to the far side, this is the site that you'll see. This is the Ridge Acre Arm, built in 1826, 50 years after the original uh, Brindley Canal going through to Balls Hill. And the Brindley Canal itself runs behind the Ridge Acre pub, and the junction is somewhere under the mayhem behind me. We'll explore the remains of the Balls Hill branch on our next episode. But for now, let's go and have a look up the Ridge Acre and see what's up there. The swans may be long gone from Swan Village, but these days a huge colony of Canada geese occupies the stub of the Ridge Acre arm. This is the middle section of the Ridge Acre branch. Pretty clear and open. Sadly, the uh, magnet fishers have been at work and uh, there is absolutely garbage everywhere. People chuck stuff off the bridge, so the canal is pretty much full up to the brim with rubbish. But looking through, you can see that the canal continues clear and straight right the way through to its terminus, about half a mile away. These industrial canals were always going to be gritty, not pretty. Um, although I reckon it does a fair passable imitation of something attractive these days. The reason I've stopped here isn't to admire the scenery though. This is the exit to the Dartmouth branch, built one year after the, uh, after the Ridgeacre branch itself. And the local council have done what they can to try and preserve fragments. And so what they've done is to lay uh, brick edgings across the towpath. So you can see there's one running along here, it goes across diagonally. And if I walk along a few hundred feet, There's another one. And between the two of them, this is a, just to try and let people know that at this point a branch canal did indeed leave. And the Dartmouth branch that we were looking at is the one that runs off across through past the back of Hilltop and out to the Croquet Ironworks and the Croquet Collieries. Not the Dartmouth branch to be seen, uh, but the track of it went along the top of that ridge following the line of the Coles Farm Collieries. They went all the way through from the uh, school you can see out at the top, 
around here and then out under these houses. But all the ground around here is subsided by at least 20 feet, so that's as high as the gutters of these houses, which would be about right, so they would take the, uh, the level of the houses up to the line of the canal above. Whilst the local authorities may well have cut this branch off uh, for boaters, back in the 1980s they did decide they'd like to think it had some kind of future. So they erected this rather nice little monument. You can see it has a look at its past with its collieries, its factories, its beam engines. A hopeful view of the future. Well, I guess the, uh, the tramway on the left, that came true. The cycleway, well, I kind of does get used to cycles. And there are plants and flowers and fish. Uh, yeah, I guess it pretty much came true. Turning round from the sculpture at the end of the Ridgeacre Arm, you'll find there is a stand of trees. And these trees are the start of the Halford branch. This little network of canals at the end of the Ridgeacre branch in some ways is very typical of what we find all over the Black Country. The canals were actually built to serve the ironworks and the ironworks tended to own the coal mines and the coal mines dug out the coal which was about 30 feet thick and as a result once the coal was worked out there was no purpose for the ironworks and then the ground settled because the, the uh, forests have all been taken out to make the pit props and the, uh, the ground in this area, or particularly out around the Dartmouth branch area, sank by nearly 20 feet. So the levels are completely and utterly all over the place. Therefore, finding the, uh, the old lines of the canals is always going to be difficult, especially when the slag heaps and the waste tailings for the coal mines have all been spread over and then built over. The Halford branch behind me does offer a few interesting little clues if we go and look. But one of the biggest benefits is I met one of my great friends here. Well, I say I met him, I met him on my blog. His name happens to be John Halford. Therefore, he got interested in the Halford Canal. And if ever you see a boat travelling around the network called Jubilee, and it's signposted saying it comes from the Halford branch, you can nod knowingly and say, yeah, I know where that is. That's near the Ridgeacre in the Black Country. These days, this is a local nature reserve. But back in the day, it was anything but. I told you before how this was quite a nice area of market gardens, uh, posh people rode their horses around the place, but when the Industrial Revolution came you had the Ridgeacre Oil Works immediately behind me and uh, then next to that there was the Cyclops Engineering Works, I mean what a fantastic name, I wonder what that looked like. Uh, you've got the, the Ridgeacre Tile Works, um, you've got about six iron works up there and then another brick works. So this little canal was used to transport all the stuff around and perhaps this is one of the keys and the misunderstandings. The canals weren't all about long distance transport. In many cases they just needed to get the coal from half a mile over there down to the foundry or the oil refinery here and they just used the boats as a way of moving this stuff around very short distances. So the vast majority of the cargo carried around here in the, in the black country was local transport moving coal relatively small distances. Johnson's Bridge itself may well have gone but the line is still there and if you follow the line of a car park around the back this is the line of the Halford branch. This is the site of the old Hall End Ironworks and if you turn around behind us there is the old Jesson arm and the Jesson arm goes out to some coal shafts of its own. Nothing to be seen of it, but as you can see, behind the houses there is a distinct open space and there's a real reluctance to build on the contaminated and marshy base of old canals. In order to trace the Halford Arm I had to dock off into a housing estate to find my way around uh, an industrial estate and I came across this public open space. Now, these public open spaces, they're very nice, but they're not provided by the council necessarily just for the good the local inhabitants. This particular area was the site of the old Hall End and Shrubbery brickworks. So huge amounts of uh, clay was dug out just ahead of us, the coal was imported from behind us and brickworks were springing up everywhere to supply the burgeoning industrial revolution and all the building that went with it. On Church Street, we worked our way around the back of the industrial estate. 
Oh, we're going to emerge from beneath, behind the seating. Just under a bridge. And into Tiverton Drive beyond. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I growled up round here. I was a little kid when I growled up So around, what were the canals yeah. like when you were a kid? All right, all yeah. right, yeah. Played with some good mates football around here and everything, yeah. And, and what, describe the old coal wharf this, this, The old coal wharf used to be Icky Bottoms. Icky Bottoms, yeah. Icky Bottoms Coal Wharf. Right. And then you had the canal. Yeah. The, con the canal run all the way around. The barges used to be on there, all the old coal barges. So, and what, when, when was that? Oh, you yeah, go back from the 50s. From oh, the excellent. 50s and 40s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's great to meet someone who's actually been here. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode of Canal Hunter. We've travelled up the Balls Hill branch as far as it's possibly navigable. We've gone beyond the weeded sections. We've got to the Ridgeacre pub and we've explored the Ridgeacre Arm, which itself was abandoned in the 1980s. Going beyond that, we saw a faint outline of the Dartmouth branch, which went off to the north. And we've explored the Halford branch that went off to the south. We've even heard from a local who saw the, bo the boats moving in the 1950s. It was all over by the 1960s. So, a little glimpse of the black country. Next time, we'll go back to the Ridgeacre pub, on where better to start, and we'll go and explore the final remains of the Balls Hill branch. So, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Happy hunting. See you next time. Mm -hmm.